Are you tired of losing dinking battles to your pickleball best friend, Joe? Well, we have the solution for you. Let's get right into these tips. And be Joe. Quick, we're giving away this brand new Engage Pursuit paddle. Stay tuned where we share the details of how you can win. All right, so the first thing we're talking about is with the footwork, we're gonna keep this very simple. So when you're in dinking battles, We'll call it limiting it to one step. So anytime I'm hitting a dink, I'm taking either one step forward, one step to the side, one step back, and I'm always coming back to that kitchen line. Sometimes we get in dinking battles and we wanna to move too much and we get out of position. Yep. So again, we'll maybe hit one or two here and I'm focused on one step only with each shot that I'm hitting. I do want to try to avoid crossing over. I crossed over on that last one. Yeah. You don't want to cross over too much because that'll make it hard for you to get back in position. Again, so we're just doing one step on each shot when we're here at the kitchen. Yep. Now, this is just a drill, right? Yeah. So this is to practice not uh, expanding and making sure you're taking a ton of steps, okay? Yeah. So don't take this and be like, oh, you know, in the comments, keyboard warriors <laughs> saying that, hey, this is not what you're supposed to do. You you got you to take two, right? No, it, you know, you're definitely gonna have more flexibility when you're playing a tournament or rec play or whatever. But this is just something to get you practicing limiting your uh, footwork and making it complex and stuff. Yeah. Simplify it. Yeah. Let's jump right into that tip number two Elisha yep. will talk about. So this tip number two is we're gonna try to simplify our, the motion of our dink. So a lot of us, we like to move our paddles all around and you even see Justin and I, we're kind of going low to high to give the, the ball a little bit of top spin so that it drops down. Now that's a little bit more of an advanced dink. What we want to do to simplify it is just create a 45 degree angle. Okay, so if we make this uh, 90 degrees and we have 180 here, we're kind of in between with that 45 degree angle. And we're just gonna make a plane and we're just moving through it nice in that simple of motion. We're not coming all the way back. We're not following through big time. We're just going maybe be maybe three or four feet through the ball, okay? So I'm gonna lay my, my paddle open and just move through it. So like so, let's see, let's get a couple. Just gonna move through the ball. So as you can see, my dinks are not crazy aggressive. I'm just laying the paddle open. And I'm just moving through the ball. Um, it's nothing complicated, and I'm not trying to make things, I'm just trying to make them very simple. Okay, so as you can see, my normal dink, I'd be like this, right? I'm moving up, maybe giving a little top spin, maybe coming through it a lot, using a lot more wrist. But for this, I'm just locking my wrist, okay? And I'm just moving it through the plane at a 45 degree angle. Yep, and this should really help with consistency. <clears throat> That's yep. one of the biggest things you'll see different at the higher levels. People are really consistent with their dinks. They're not missing the easy ones in the net. That's one of the biggest mistakes, never missing the net. But they're also not popping it up so their opponent can take it out of the air. So yep. consistent, good, good drops yep. right at the feet. As you simplify it, it's easier to make good contact. And good contact is what's gonna make your consistent dinks happen. Yep. Yep. Dude, Justin, we need to figure out how we can get people to get this awesome shirt and these awesome They're cool. They're really comfy. Shoes. Yeah. I know. How are we going to do it? Well, we, we don't want to be too pushy. We need, to, we need something creative. Yeah. What if we just tell them? It's in the description. 10% okay. off. I mean, we could do that. All gear. Wait, are we, are we filming? Is that on? Oh. Check out the description. <laughs> All right, so before we get into that last tip, if you could like, hit that like button, and then subscribe. And even like make sure you smash that like button. Yeah. Like you smash you. that over yeah. oh. <laughs> And then also leave a comment down below. We'd really appreciate it. So for this last tip is we're gonna, we're gonna get our paddle out in front of us and we're gonna keep it at about the net level, right? We want easy access to high balls that come at us and low balls that come at us. So we want it a little bit more in between so that we're not one direction or the other. Um, if, if Justin's hitting a ball low and I have it up here at my face, I'm gonna have trouble getting it down. So I want it around in between and I want a good athletic stance. So I'm bending my knees, my feet are a little bit wider than my shoulders and my paddle is at the height of the net, okay? But I'm not, I'm not back here, okay? I'm not bringing my paddle back here. I'm making sure 
it's in front of my body, okay? So both Justin and I are gonna kind of show you how this is done when it comes to dinking. So I'm gonna keep it in front. And I'm just gonna get that <coughs> ball as early as possible and not try to um, bring my paddle back too far. I'm gonna try to get it early. And if I can even, if I can even take it out of the air, go ahead. I always like beginners that to make an attempt to take the ball out of the air. Well, and not, that's, that's one of the advantages of being out in front like this. Yep. Is because when the ball comes, you're yep. right there, you're ready to take and it out of the air. You can take it out of the air, yep. So make sure that, again, the feet are a little bit wider than the shoulders. We got a good bend, a good stance. Back is straight. And then our paddle is right around our waist level, okay? If, if I'm up here at the net, my waist is a little higher than the net, but when I bend my knees, it's around waist level. So make sure that that net, the paddle is around net level and it's not too high or not too low. And it's in front, not back, right? Love it. For this next tip, we're looking at trying to move our opponent. So one thing you can think of, we talked about early on, ourselves only moving one step. Yep. Try to get your opponent to move more than one step. So if we're looking to be better at dinking than we are now, we not only need to just be consistent with our dinks, but we need to be intentional on how we're placing our dinks. Yep. So we're gonna hit some here, and I'm gonna I'm focus. Joe. He's Joe, I'm trying to beat Joe, my yeah. best friend. <laughs> and so I'm gonna be moving him. I'm trying to get him to move more than one step on yep. each shot. So here we go. I'm not gonna try to move his step. So I'm just moving him around. Yeah. That's a great dink. There we go. Nice. And I might even mix Ooh, up the speeds a little one. bit just to get him uh, uncomfortable with the pace yeah. and, and not allow him to get in too much of a groove. Might hit some a little bit softer, might hit some a little bit harder. But again, yeah. this tip is really to focus on getting your opponent to move more than one step. Yep. And one thing that I think Justin does really well is he doesn't go, uh, especially when you're trying to do this, is you're not trying to be crazy aggressive, okay? You're just trying to move the ball placement-wise, yeah. right? I always teach a, uh, the progression, right? And this progression goes consistency first, get it in the court, and then you place it, and then you hit it there faster and harder, right? Yeah. So until we can get it in, so um, this is a good tip, but until, if, if you find yourself trying this and you're hitting it you know, wide and yeah. over there and it's just going out of control, then just work to hit it right back. Control to Justin. first. Control yeah. first, get it in. And then start to move them trying to take that step. And then once that happens, then you can be like more aggressive. You can maybe hit a little bit harder and lower over the net. But for now, let's get that margin for air and let's make it very consistent and get those placement so that we can have lots of repetition in a, ra a dink rally. Yeah. We're excited to partner with Engage to give away this brand new Pursuit RX 6.0. To enter, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment what type of video you want to see next. The winner will be announced in exactly four weeks on November 1st on our Instagram.